14,310 pounds, big, beautiful, late model North Point here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Just came in on trade. Rear private bunkhouse, bath and a half, outside kitchen, five slides, and a partridge in a pear tree. So why is it here? Well, uh, this was part kept. Grandpa and Grandma bought it with the idea of the grandkids coming to visit a lot. And after about a year, they didn't. So Grandpa and Grandma swapped this out for a big pinnacle uh, luxury couples camper to maximize their living space. This rig is a lot of things, but traveling friendly really ain't one of them. This is most certainly made to be a, uh, a big bad destination model. Now, of course you can get to the master bathroom and the front bedroom in transit really without issue, but when the slides are closed, you can see that you really can't navigate much in the way of the living area. Um, you could get to the half bath from the outside and the outside kitchen for what that's worth, but you're not really going to be able to get to anything in the kitchen without bumping any of the slide outs. That's just kind of one of the catch 22s of a really big floor plane like this being so jam packed with slides in a series of privatized smaller rooms. The privatization is nice because of obviously privacy, but it also means that you're you're blocking off a lot of otherwise, you know, passable space. So let's get it opened up and see how she's really intended to be seen. Another thing to quickly note I am on limited battery power currently, so I do have limited lights on. It would normally be a lot nicer, lighter, and brighter in here, but I think we'll still get a pretty good idea. It's not too awful bad. I don't have any wicked outside back lighting. Um, let's start up top and work my way down so I don't miss anything, and I'm going to still just cruise through this fast because, man, there's a lot to talk about on any Jayco, specifically stuff like Eagles, North Points, and Pinnacles. Uh, we're going to talk about roof outside. We've got uh, whisper ducted AC here in our main living cabin to help keep that uh, noise from the air down. Obviously, you see the blades of that ceiling fan peeking through. Over here, we also have, let me get a little closer so you can see it, a uh, Max Air style roof vent fan with wall controller, and it does have a rain sensor. So if it does start to drizzle and that thing's open, it'll close itself right down. The entertainment on this is pretty great. Because it's on that nice angle, it really can be easily seen anywhere in the living area, uh, including the two recliners that I'm standing next to right now that we'll see as I spin around. This is a trifold hide-to-bed sleeper sofa, as if the sleeping for five in the rear private room and the two in the master bedroom was not enough, you could sleep one on the dinette, if they're kids, because that's not a super long dinette, it's a normal dinette, two here on the hide-to-bed, and maybe even one on one of these recliners. I mean, if you straight have to. You could rack them and stack them pretty darn tight into this thing. Now, I always try to be fair. I don't only blow sunshine and rainbows and bubbles and kittens and whatever at people. This window shade, I cannot get to retract. I don't know if the mechanism has been damaged or if it's just so darn cold that it just don't want to work. Everything else on this RV has worked fine that I've seen. And additionally, I have not seen, like, Visible scratches, scars, dings, gouges, defects. Again, it was just an older couple who had planned to use this thing for a grandkid retreat, and the grandkids just didn't come along. So it really has not been used the way that you would expect a bunkhouse to be used. So this is what's called a dream dinette. It folds down easily for a bonus sleeper, and you can see those drawers for easy storage access to everything under there. Slide side windows are going to open for great airflow. And uh, I already mentioned the entertainment center, but what you don't realize, if you look at that cabinet behind and to the left of that TV, you can see how deep that is. There's actually very good pantry space within the entertainment area here that you don't realize is there, and an electric space heating fireplace to just kind of take the nip out of the air, and I wish that sucker was running right now. This does have a uh, residential refrigerator in it. Um, the uh, idea here is that this has been equipped and built more for a permanent park type situation. Could you tow it? Sure. Uh, but a fridge like this tends to be happier more at a site than getting towed with frequency. Uh, the uh, you know big residential size microwave here with the sealed burner stove top below. And uh, what's nice about this is it's just much, much easier to clean. Someone's going to ask, is that convection? This one happens to not be. That being said, it's not a hard thing to swap out for a convection. But note the little drawer below that uh, like standalone oven. With I, I like the fact that there's actually the little viewing plate right on the front of that so that 
uh, like the window on the front of the stove so that or oven so we can see inside of it but there's a full drawer below it you know nothing got missed in case you're wondering all these little white balls there's a whole collection of those little moisture collectors back here and apparently they bounced around in trains enough some of those little white beady things got out of there but that that's easily swept up no big deal there so here's the really the focal point of this floor plan is not the living area but it actually it's this rear room it gives us this private rear bunk area or the thing is guys this doesn't have to be a bunkhouse this could easily be what i call a rear den because you've got that privacy door that bed flips up this is another high to bed sofa by the way so you can sleep two there one there so this slide alone can sleep three people but we've also got what could very easily be considered a full rear entertainment center back here that's what's kind of interesting about this one is that it really fills two roles now the cold weather and my breath and ice crystals in the air and every other thing really makes the camera struggle. So if the camera's losing a little focus, just pretend it has ADD and it's coming around. Uh, now, down here, this is how they you can get the extra like full-size outside kitchen mounted on the slide of a bunkhouse because the bottom bunk actually flips up and down. Now, when it flips down, you can't leave it that way and close the slides because it would crush. But when it flips up, it creates this handy little like storage chest. And tell me, especially in a room for kids, when too much storage is ever the wrong thing? And the answer is it's not. And this camera is really struggling with the weather today. Apologies, guys. Um, back here, this is our half bath. And what's great about this is that it, uh, it, it really sort of eliminates the need at night to go trucking across the camper just for a, a quick potty trip, you know what I mean? And notice too how there's a window shade built right into the window of that bathroom uh, door. So you've got extra light in here when you need it, but you've also maintained full privacy. Now at night, if someone has to use the bathroom, like my wife, my daughter, I love them to death, but they're up and down two or three times a night to use the bathroom. Or so they tell me, I don't know, because dude, when I sleep, I am clocked out. Like, I will sit there with my alarm going off for 10 minutes, and I'm dead asleep. It just, I wake up when my body's ready to wake up. It's just my thing. But in a camper like this, if there are light sleepers, and you don't want to rock the whole trailer around, it's very easy now to be able to get to the bathroom and, and not disturb everyone. This is really one of the cool parts of this floor plan. Layouts like this have existed for years, but originally they used to have some kind of little crappy bench right here. Jayco was one of the first... They extended it a little bit. They gave it a pair of recliners right here. So, uh, you know, the mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, whoever owns the RV, you can really sit here, kick your feet up, and relax, you know? Now, that black rectangle right there, that is the uh, uh, one control by LCI. Basically, there's a lot of automated features you can do off this RV, or, or wireless features, not automated. There's a difference there. But there's things you can do with this RV straight off your phone or that pad right there that you can control. Uh, the, and to show you how little these folks actually used it, guys, they never took the plastic skin off the face of the one control. <laughs> it's, they, they really did not abuse this thing. But you always maintain a normal, full, physical switch panel right here. Moving upstairs before we step outside. Great bathroom on this model. Now, there's also lower accent lights in multiple areas of the RV. And, uh, you know, so if you are trying to go into what I call stealth mode, which is use the RV at night without waking everybody up, well, you've got plenty of accent lighting to do that. Now, just like in the kitchen, you've got the bigger fan in here with the wall controller. And this was built during the period where they were actually using the even larger showers than they are now. Now, the offset to that is today's North Points and Pinnacles tend to have a bigger linen space. But, that being said... Tell me this is not enough linen space right here. This is plenty of linen space. You can keep plenty of towels, even some extra beach towels or toiletries or whatever in here. No sweat. And this is the controller for the on-demand uh, hot water system that we'll talk a little bit more outside. Long story short, guys, no more cold showers. And especially in a big bunkhouse like this where there could be a bunch of people taking a shower. That is a nice feature. Now, I've got the window shades in here drawn because otherwise the sun just plays havoc with the camera. But a couple things I want to point out. A common thing people miss and I think it's a really important factor, is that Jayco North Points and Pinnacles are better for taller people. We carry other very nice fifth wheels like, uh, you know, open ranges and, and especially the Keystone Montana series, which is just beautiful. 
but these are built taller. That's one of the reasons that North Points and Pentacles tend to be heavier than something like a Montana. Very, very similar, similar comparable products. They all have things the other doesn't, but to give you a reference point, I'm like 6'3", guys. Let me stand all the way over by the wall here. There is no point where I even have to think about ducking in this living room. And that is one of the nice things about Jayco fifth wheels, uh, specifically the North Point Pinnacle Series. They tend to be bigger. Now you can see the second air conditioner has been installed here. So this has a 30,000 uh, BTU dual centralized air conditioning system. The uh, air AC ducts can both be turned and closed, which is great. Now, the uh, one hiccup with this floor plan is that if they built this with a king bed, they would have to extend the entire RV, and that would mean that it would actually be too large of a uh, square foot of floor space to still be technically considered an RV. At that point, it would be considered a mobile home. So this is a queen floor plan only, but it is a residential 60 by 80 queen. Now, this is uh, Jayco's what they call walk-in closet with a true cedar lining, and there is like great double hanging space, shelf space, all kinds of room for shoes and whatnot. And if you are so inclined, you could put a stackable washer and dryer in here. But short of that, you're just going to enjoy a huge chunk of additional storage. Again, uh, most of your main rooms have these lower accent lights to give you a, a reference point so you know where you're going with an extra tall dresser and nicely framed in entertainment center here. So that should you choose to add a TV to your bedroom, you got a perfect shot at it. Other than needing a bath from normal Midwestern winter buildup, she looks pretty good. That being said, makes sense. It's late model enough, it shouldn't have had any sort of hiccups. You can see that we've got the slide awnings all the way around. Neat thing here that's easy to miss too, this power awning. Naturally, there's LED lighting under it, but there's also like a compression wrap on, uh, on the outside of the awning material. It's actually built right into the awning material itself. So that basically it just helps keep it protected from extra weather. The part of the awning that is always exposed that is not rolled up is essentially extra heavy duty and thick to withstand weather, uh, you know, damage effectively, you know, premature wear and tear. So a couple things to point out down here. Uh, up top you can see the Moride handy little um, storage drawer that was available on Pinnacles and North Points for a couple of years. I always loved it, but unfortunately not enough people uh, wanted it, so it had to get phased out, you know? The um, pass-through here on a drop frame storage is quite large, and on the opposite side against that opposite door, you can see how there's a manual hand reel for the uh, power cord, which strangely, the previous owners did not use. It makes manipulating that 50 amp cord much simpler. There's outside TV hookups down here. It is wired for solar prep. And this is one of the areas where you can see Jayco go a little bit further with their insulation package. Um, the uh, basically zero to 100 degree package, it's like almost any manufacturer of fifth wheels nowadays is zero to 100 degree rated. But what most brands don't publish is their actual performance data at those marks. Jayco does. And currently, they are pretty much unopposed as having the highest performance values at zero and 100 degrees. So it's colder at 100 degrees and warmer at zero. It is generator ready. That is something that we could install for you here at Halet RV if you'd like. Uh, the docking center is all enclosed in the uh, baggage drawer there. One thing to point out on this, this does have an on-demand water heater, which is an atypical thing you don't see as often in the marketplace. Some folks get a little spooked by it. It's just one of those things, guys, like you know when you get a new house, you have to push the buttons a few times so you can figure out what each of the light switches do. That's what those uh, on-demand water heaters are like. Once you figure them out, and it doesn't take that long, like a day, you're going to like it. Because you know what that thing means? It means no more cold showers. It means no more cold water trying to clean dishes. And, you know, you can't really clean grease off dishes with cold water. This does have six-point automatic push-button leveling. It does have a backup camera. We've got a two-inch receiver hitch on the back for things like uh, bike racks and light-duty cargo trays or pods. It's not made for towing. Um, rarely are you going to tow on something this large anyway because of length restrictions. Uh, the roof has Jayco's uh, double vaulted Magnum Trust XL6 roof system rated for like 4,800 or some odd silly pounds. It's pretty crazy. And Jayco was one of the first, maybe the first, I'm not sure, I haven't verified that, but I know they were among the first to crack the code of installing a full-size outside kitchen 
into a bunkhouse slide like this. So we're getting the ability to put in a bigger television. We have the galvanized rolled steel countertops, a real sink with a real drain, the pull-out cooktop that's there when you need it, gone when you don't. It is a fully featured, fully equipped thing. And there are four steps here. Apparently I just forgot to flip the bottom step down. And that is a direct entry door to the half bathroom back here. Here's a fun little fine point detail. And this is still true in the new RV market today. You see how there's a little black tank flush here. This RV has two black tank flushes because it has two black tanks. Do you realize that's not normal practice in the RV industry? Most brands who build two bathroom floor plans or a bath and a half uh, as it were. The second bathroom tends not to have a black tank flush. Now pardon me if I'm, I'm doing some kind of rough camera work here. I'm walking on sheer ice for a second there and I really didn't feel like taking a spill although that would make a really funny moment in a video. Normally this is the time where I'd like to climb up on the roof to show you around but it's covered in snow. You're not going to see much and frankly it's just dangerous. So I need to ask you to bear with me and we can't get quite on the roof yet today. Hopefully the weather warms up and right now it feels like it is so uh you know if you come to visit the rv in person that's something we can absolutely arrange for you short of that guys hitching pieces parts trades finance rv delivery truck and trailer package deals and everything in between we do it all at halet rv but we don't do hidden dealer fees so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone